So let me see if I can get back to that other chat window. And we're gonna to talk today kind of about the nuts and bolts of the essentials, doing this in day-to-day -day life. Um, yeah, I can't find that other one. So, and I'm in the kitchen today. I was gonna see, it might be too dark. I was gonna make truffles for you. Um, can we do this here? I think I, think I can. So, chaffles, if you guys haven't heard, I'm going to make them real quick while you guys are telling me about your first days on carnivore. So, what you do is there's little tiny waffle irons. Um, this is called the dash, and it's just like little. Look how little it is in my hand. You want to preheat it, and that's the key to making chaffles. Let's make sure it's preheated well enough. And then all you add, and this is perfect for zero carb or carnivore, is cheese. I'm going to use two cups of cheese and then four eggs. What you can do, it just has to be half a cup of cheese to, um, Deborah says she's doing a little bit of stevia and coffee. You will do none tomorrow. See, that's progress. That's what I want to hear. Um, so cheese and eggs, and it makes a waffle. It's really, I've been using these in my daughter's lunch, and they're fantastic. So this is... Do you use pre-sorted cheese about about potato starch? Um, this is for my daughter, she's on keto. And yeah, I do use pre-shredded cheese because it's so much easier. Um, when we did GAPS and we were really strict allergy elimination, um, I didn't, so I shredded all my cheese. But now that we are not, I don't worry about it. It's something that it's kind of like, if I can shred my cheese, then I will. And for pictures, honestly, when I'm doing stuff for the blog, I do because it looks better without that starch in it. But for time crunching, I do definitely buy loads of pre-shredded cheese, actually. You can't be bothered shredding it. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, maybe if I'm doing everything else in my life perfectly and I haven't gotten around to doing the shredded cheese, I will fix that. But right now, who's made chaffles before? These cheese waffles are, like, all over Instagram right now. That's why I wanted to show you. I think some of you guys still haven't seen them. So this is our cheese and egg mixture. And we're still waiting for this to preheat. I'll show you my... And so the first thing we're going to talk about is packing lunches on carnivore because this is kind of where we're heading back to work tomorrow and the kids are heading to school. Um, these chaffles are fantastic. If you're doing day eggs and dairy, then you can spread this with some liverwurst or put some sliced turkey in it. If you're using seasonings, you can use um, like some mustard is fine. Um, that's kind of a gray area with carnivore. And so just no matter how strict you're being, but you can use cream cheese, you can use... Um, I just like to do meat and like a little bit of cream cheese and these, and it is delicious. So other, um, oh, you added, you did pork rinds to this. I haven't added pork rinds. I've just been doing it just like this with just the cheese and the egg and it's so simple and it's so easy. I'm gonna grab a plate though so I have somewhere to put them. And so another thing that's great for packing lunches is liverwurst. And you can get, there's like bo both pork and beef liverwurst. Um, I can't remember what the beef one is called from U.S. Wellness Meats. And I've used that kind of forever. It's a great way to get liver in hard boiled eggs. And if you want to buy them pre hard boiled at the store, I know it's not hard to hard boiled eggs, but if you want to buy them already done, then hard boiled eggs are great to have on hand. I'm just going to talk to you up here like this. Um, my, this is Ryan's house. We're in Ryan's house right now while we're waiting to close on our house. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you up here while we're waiting for our truffle iron, our dash truffle iron to heat up. Um, how many meals per day? I usually do two for me. My kids do three. Um, I think that that's something actually that's something I'd like to talk about a little bit is that people that try to intermittent fast and do carnivore and maybe start an exercise routine, it's going to be too much. So if you're hungry, eat like I'd rather have you eat regular food than um, 
or eat like carnivore food and eat more than even three times a day. But in general, like we feel so satiated. I don't know from those of you that it started on September 1st. Are you finding today that like, wow, I'm not even close to eating how many calories I think I should be eating. And that's okay. You'll probably just be super hungry tomorrow. So my meals tend to fluctuate. Like there'll be a couple days in a row that I'll do low calories. And then like the third or fourth day, I'm usually starving and I just eat a bunch and maybe I do eat three or four meals on that day. So that's just a great way that you can listen to your body. And because the food is so nourishing and your body might just want a to um, kind of balance between getting that extra nourishment and having that rest, resting time to rebuild itself. And so that's just kind of what you can watch for. Um, you definitely shouldn't be eating six times a day every day. That's just like excessive and it's gonna keep your body in this constant state of digesting. digesting. And so you're gonna heal better if you can eat less. Yeah, Jeff says he needs 3000 calories to maintain or you lose. Yeah, like it's like, Sitting down and eating a thousand calories is that's a lot of work. <laughs> it's like an exercise and chewing, I think, is what the rock says. So we'll go back to packing lunches. So we have liverwurst, hard boiled eggs, cold bacon. Bacon's super good cold. It's like chips, like greasy chips. Um, cold steak, and you can cube it or you can slice it. You can like slather it with liverwurst. You can put cream cheese on it. Liver pate on truffles that we're going to show in a minute. Truffles with a turkey with turkey breast. If you go to your deli section, if they have Applegate, Applegate smoked turkey is just turkey, salt, and water. And so you can get them to slice that really thinly. That's what we use um, for everyone's sandwich. Um, shredded meat in a thermos. And this is, I bought this thermos in 2011. I was just like grabbing the link for you on Amazon and I'll update that in the description when we're done with this. But, and it does have a spoon that goes with it. But this thermos, I think it's 16 ounces, um, still going strong. They've actually come down in price. I feel like I paid $30 for this and it was a lot at the time. So meat and hot stock in a thermos is a great like shredded meat with tallow. And this is a lot of food. 16 ounces um, is a lot of food. So you can like fill it halfway with meat and then pour stock on the top. Then it's not all dry. Meatballs and stock again in the thermos or just packing this with meatballs is really good as well And meatballs are great that you can use different meats and so I like to do like a little bit of lamb a little bit of pork a little bit of um, Usually elk we have lots of elk and that's a great way um, Let's see Show. I'm Trying to edit comments as well. So Teresa asked how what do you deal with friends that say you need a multivitamin? Ask them what they think you're going to be deficient in. And so actually I do supplement with vitamin C. So I just use a little bit of lemon because I noticed I was bruising a lot. And that is something that, especially with women, um, we might not be able to be absorbing whatever it is we need to absorb the iron that we're obviously getting a ton of iron and meat. So I do supplement with vitamin C and it doesn't make me not carnivore. It doesn't make me the diet a failure. It's not a um, thing. But other than that, ask them what they think you're going to be deficient in. And pretty much they're not going to be able to find anything because it's a very nutrient dense diet, especially if you eat liver. So more um, more packed lunch ideas is shredded meat in the thermos, meatballs in stock, cod liver. And I was, I was going through, we're still packed. <laughs> so I was going through my boxes looking for my cod liver. But if you look at my resources page, there's little cans of cod liver and they don't smell like sardines. Like they smell fishy, but they're not quite as bad as sardines. <laughs> so if you find cod liver, um, I get it on Amazon and it tastes really good and it's in its own oil. You're going to want to drain the oil off. That's a lot to take at one time. And then I think our truffle iron's ready. So I'm going to bring you back down there. All right. There it is. So it probably still had some stuff on it. So the key with this, when you're making these, and for those of you that just joined, this is half a cup of shredded cheese to one egg. You don't want to overfill it or it'll, it'll um, leak out. So even this might be a little bit much. We're just going to close it. So I make, um, I make like eight of these at a time and I use two for my daughter's sandwich every day. Now that we're not doing as much of the coconut flour and stuff, because I found so much benefit from animal products. Is carnivore better for gap than gaps for children with neurological issues? Um, Dr. Natasha, in her vegetarian book, she does say that lots of people thrive on carnivore. 
um, is something that I would be cautious with. I haven't put my kids on carnivore, but they are on meat heavy keto. And so I would, I would recommend keeping some of the, like the juicing protocol in GAPS like does have a merit and it's kind of a um, specific medical protocol. And so I would just like, if you are going through stage one and you take out all plants for like three or four days, just see how it goes. And then if you need to add some back in, or you can just kind of see how it goes because stage one on GAPS is really so close to carnivore anyway. Um, egg salad with bacon mayonnaise. So you can make mayonnaise out of um, bacon grease with like just blend up a little bit of an egg yolk and then pour in warm bacon grease and keep pouring and that makes mayonnaise. And that's in my 30 day carnivore meal plan book. And you can buy that down below as well. And cold chicken thighs, that's what I had for breakfast or for breakfast, actually breakfast and lunch today is I baked up a ton of chicken thighs skin on with just salt um, last night for dinner. And then they're really good cold. And so that's something like the skin is like, it makes it so it doesn't dry out when it gets cold. And so just keep that skin on and eating those chicken thighs um, cold the next day is a great way to get um, lunch into you. And it's an easy thing that you can make them all at once in a meal prep on the weekends and then portion them out. Do I make sure I'm getting enough fat? I do um, calculate that. So let me go grab my book, Jessica. So you can get this in both ebook and paperback copy if you want. Um, the paperback, if you search like carnivore meal plan on Amazon, it'll pop right up. But that's a big reason why I calculated these at the end of the day. There's a day total. And this is something where you don't, and so it says like 69% of calories from fat, 30% calories from protein. Um, so this is something where you don't have to be like exact, you don't have to follow my recipes at exactly. But because I did calculate that out, it's easy to see at a glance like, oh, that's higher in fat. Like chicken, even with the skin on is not that high in fat. Red meat is pretty high. Teresa says she tried beef liver and couldn't handle the taste. Decided to cut it up into little pieces and freeze it so you can take them like a frozen pill. Any tips on preparing liver if you've tried it? I love liver. Um, it's an acquired taste. Start with chicken liver. Um, start with the cod livers. The cod livers are really mild. So the little canned cod livers. And just like put it on something like a truffle or um, pork rinds. And so I eat it with pork rinds a lot. And then just kind of work towards it. And as your microbiome adjusts, you're going to start craving. I crave liver. I still don't like liver. Like I will eat it because I know my body wants it and I feel better after I've had it but it's not something that I still enjoy the taste of. But like I'll make a thing of liver pate and I do have a recipe video of the liver pate that's with chicken liver. And I will find myself like I'll eat that whole four ounces in one day. And it's just like that must have been what my body wanted. The frozen pill thing is totally legit, but like you have to realize that a pill sized piece of liver is really small when your body is probably asking for like ounces <laughs> at a time of liver. Um, veal liver is milder in taste. Yeah. Ours is called calf liver because veal has the negative connotations. Um, and so just keep trying it. And like with those pills, you have to eat a lot, but it could be that your body after taking those pills, and at least it does go over the tongue. It's not in a capsule. Um, let's see if these are ready yet. So once your body is used to liver, it's going to start asking for it more vocally. And you can probably start tolerating it. So there's our waffle. Let me get out a clean fork. So this is mozzarella. I have been using cheddar for her. And these are, it's just cheese and egg. So this is a totally carnivore friendly. And the key is you don't want to fill it any more full than that. There we go. You guys can meal prep with me. <laughs> School week starts again um, next week. See, Jeff says he bought good quality liver. XX says they grew up eating liver. See, that's what my hope is for my kids. I don't tell Ryan or my kids, but I put liver in taco meat every taco night. And that's a great way if you're eating seasonings, just use the taco seasoning. And I have an additive free taco seasoning on my site. If you just search taco seasoning in the search bar. Um, the, the garlic really covers it up really well. And like taco spices do too. And so I'm hoping that my kids like, 
appreciate the liver and like their body knows, hey, if I'm low in A or D, then I should ask for liver. Beef liver is best when combined with steak. Um, that's that's awesome. I haven't tried that before. I do like beef liver better chilled. Like it's easier for me to eat chilled. Not a huge fan of it. I will eat it though. Can't eat the recommended two pounds of meat, Tina. Um, are you losing and you don't want to lose? Because it's hard. It's hard eating that much meat. I have a hard time doing it without dairy, I'll be honest. And so if you have weight to lose, then that's fine. Like you can just like be burning your body fat. But if you don't and you're losing weight and you don't want to um, either like work on upping your fats because the fats are just an easier way to get more calories in or maybe your body is fine and you can maintain on that one pound a day. Seafood, it helps like it's not calorie dense, but it, it's a great way to like kind of change things up. I had shrimp today um, to change things up. So what do you feed the rest of, we're going to move on. I've got this list that I'm trying to cover, but I also want to get to your questions as they come up. Serve and turf with liver. Yeah, that's the best. Like if you can bribe yourself to eat liver with scallops, then totally bribe yourself with more meat. That's great. Um, what to feed the rest of the family. A lot of you guys are doing this for yourselves and maybe your family's not doing it. I, um, I cook meat first and that's just what we eat. So if there's only one thing on the table, it's going to be meat. And the rest of my family has adjusted to this really well, but we all tend to do really well with a high meat diet anyway. This is not a shock. We always eaten a lot of meat. And um, so I do that. I have baby carrots and I just bought like a bunch of apples that I keep in the fridge for the kids and I bring applesauce in for them. And so I really just try to streamline side dishes. It's like when we do that, um, hamburger casserole a lot. I should make that next time we do a live because <laughs> I should just make that hamburger casserole with you because it's really good. It's just like burger that's been ground and you can add garlic and mushrooms if you want. Um, and then you can mix in um, mustard and ketchup if you want to do that, or you can just leave it plain. And then you sprinkle it with cheese and then you top it with cooked, like slightly cooked bacon and then you bake the whole thing. Everyone loves that with sour cream. And so it's just, I've just been cooking carnivore for my family and I have frozen peas. I have baby carrots. I have um, a few other things that they get alongside of it. I just don't prioritize making side dishes anymore. And so that's um, feeding the rest of the family. And like meal prepping always helps. Like I, I don't eat a ton of dairy, but I do make a big instant pot full of um, full fat yogurt for my kids. And I just put like individually portion that out into little tiny mason jars. And I put blueberries on the top of that. And so it's easy to kind of meal prep for them and then cook our main dish being meat every, every meal. How much meat should you buy? A good rule. So I have um, in here and all of you guys on the bottom of your um, emails from me, you should be getting a link to like the grocery list overview or the meal plan overview and then a grocery list. So that's a good like weekly estimate on how much meat you should buy about two pounds a day and so some of those will be two pounds of red meat which is higher in calories and some of that will mix in with two pounds of like shrimp that is really low in calories liver jerky i yeah i totally want to try liver jerky i think i need to do it when i can put my dehydrator outside though i don't think i'm gonna want my house to smell like liver <laughs> Kim says her kids have gotten used to meat and vegetables, no starches. That's awesome. Like think of what you're setting your kids up for and their body is going to just get this constant um, state of not being in the blood sugar highs and lows as they're growing and developing. Like a lot of you guys know, cause I posted about this in the community on YouTube. I brought my kids to the dentist and they hadn't been to the dentist in three years. Cause it hit, we had like a pretty bad experience at the dentist um, three years ago. So it took me three years to finally bring them in. No cavities. Um, my daughter, she grinds, so she did have one cavity. My boys, no cavities. I asked the dentist to evaluate my two boys or all three kids for braces. Like, how likely is it that I need to be saving up for braces for these kids so they don't need them? And so this is like when you feed your kids right. It's just amazing. Um, and I feel like we do, like I told you, my kids get applesauce and stuff. We don't eat perfectly. They, 
I've got boxes of applesauce on my table right now that are going into kindergarten. Um, we don't eat perfectly, but we're meat focused and we've always been fat focused. And my kids have gone in and out of ketosis, um, probably more in than out. And they're thriving and like their jaw development is thriving. Let's see. Michaela Peterson, I love Michaela Peterson, um, says to eat meat first in a meal and then vegetables that will reduce any blood sugar spikes. That makes sense. And that's kind of, um, if you guys have seen my picky eating solution course, I'm going to take my chocolate out. Don't forget about it. Um, I recommend serving kids their meals in courses. And so like put one thing on there. Don't put like three things on a plate. So put one thing on a plate, have them eat that which is usually like whatever you want them to eat first. And then they can have from the other one until they have healthy, like my 10 year old can have, or my 10 and 12 year old can have whatever they want on their plate and they know to eat their meat first, but definitely um, encouraging kids to eat their meat first is important. Belinda, two pounds and trying to lose weight. It's just going to depend. And I know that like, it's not all calories in calories out, but it's going to, if you just spot check and see what, how many calories you're probably burning at the size that you are or the size you want to be. Um, and then see how many calories are in that two pounds, two pounds of meat and adjust accordingly. Cause it's going to be different from like, I'm five, nine versus someone that's five one. <laughs> and so I eat about two pounds of meat and I'll maintain and I'm fairly active, but someone that's a lot shorter than me and less active is probably going to need less. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it definitely saves a lot of money with no braces and not to mention like braces can't fix everything. It means their whole midline has developed correctly. My opinion of raw versus cooked versus fully cooking meat um, and nutrition I like raw when it's, I think like seasonally it'll vary and probably people that are in warmer climates will probably like raw better. I don't, um, I don't know nutri nutrition wise other than that you're like not cooking out the fat. So it's easier to get that fat in. It's really mild and easy to eat raw when it's hot and you don't feel like eating. Um, digestion wise, because like I come from gaps and I've always like if people are having a hard time just digesting things, I use the instant pot and I just like really cook it really well and even puree it if needed um, or have it be like ground beef. And so I think that I do see some stuff coming out that I'm not digesting when it's raw. So I think there's more that you're absorbing if you're having a hard time absorbing your food, if it's cooked really well, but I'm sure individual results vary. Let's see. Linda says that someone's recommending 70% fat and 30% or 70% probably protein or fat. Yeah. And 30% protein It's calories from, and that's about what I like, like 80, 20, 70, 30. Um, I definitely don't like it to be higher protein. Hey, Hillary, I'm glad you made it over here. I couldn't figure out how to link to this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I couldn't figure out how to start my webcam from that one. And I wanted to be on the computer this time, not the, um, not my phone. Yeah, someone says that um, they didn't brush their teeth on keto and the dentist said to keep doing what they're doing. Yeah, I've had like, I'm missing three teeth because I was like vegetarian and then I had the kids and like my teeth like rotted. And um, I've had no problems with my teeth since becoming like sticking with keto or carnivore. And so I, I totally believe it. I brush my teeth and floss. I like clean teeth, but <laughs> um, my kids definitely have not done the twice a day like they should have. And I'm like, amazed that they're not having more problems. And so I definitely attribute that to food. Probably just like everything else, it's like 90% food, 10% what you're doing. Um, yeah, serve meat as the first course. Like, right, it's not that hard. And if that's kind of what you make and it's like, oh, well, we're out of green beans so you can have more meat, then that's kind of my option. Like a lot of times I'll cook my kids eggs or whatever in the morning and I'll cook myself a steak and, or they'll have like cottage cheese and blueberries or I'll give myself a steak. And my five-year-old the other day, he's like, I don't want that. I'm all, well, you can have steak with mom. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and so he ate steak with mom. It's like, I usually don't give them options, but if they're going to choose meat, they can choose meat. That's fine. Hi, Roxy from North Carolina and Swaggy Wolf. 
Um, do I ever eat raw meat? I eat, yeah, I do eat raw meat. Um, I eat really healthy raw meat, so I only eat it from one of our local farms that I really trust or butcher box. I don't eat raw meat from the grocery store and just not comfortable with it. Um, but I do primarily eat cooked meat, mostly because of the social aspect. Like I can't just cut up a raw steak and eat it in front of most people. Let's see what else do we have? What is what else is on our um how, oh ketosis? Let's talk about that. So, like a lot of you guys test with ketone meters and you've been testing with the P strips and stuff, and you say I'm less in ketosis on carnivore than I was on keto. And that could be because um you're just adapting, and so your body knows how many ketones it needs to make, and it's not making as many because you're not maybe fluctuating as much of how many ketones you need. And so it just stopped overproducing. Unless you're doing ketosis for like seizure control, I really wouldn't worry about how much ketosis you are in. Um, I have never tracked. I can tell if I'm in ketosis or not just because I get like the boost in mental clarity. But I, and most people like you will make the amount of sugar in your blood that you need. Like you can't have blood sugar level zero. You need to be between like 75 and 125. And so your body will make that even if you're fasting and you're not consuming anything. But that doesn't mean that like if you're eating too much protein, you're going to get kicked out of ketosis for most people. And most people on here, you guys really just need to stick with zero carb carnivore for 30 days to see the results you're going to get. And then maybe if you've been really strict for 30 days and you want to tweak like your fat to protein ratio, that's something that you totally can do. I'm still taking my waffles out. You'll see this one. Aren't those fun? Um, you can do that. But when we start like worrying, oh my gosh, if I eat like an extra piece of jerky, I'm going to kick myself out of ketosis and all of this is going to be for nothing. It's really not like that's what's awesome about carnivore. It's super simple. You don't really need to track anything. If you eat all animal foods, unless you're eating like a bunch of honey and a bunch of like skim milk, um, you're going to be in ketosis. And so that's something that I never would really worry about. Some of you guys like to track and that's super interesting. I think that's interesting too. Um, I just don't track because I don't have time for that. Let's see. Jeff says his fasted glucoses are always around 103. I don't know, that's still within the range of normal. There is like usually people's fasted glucose reading in the morning I know is usually um, one of the higher ones. I don't remember why. There is someone and he talked at the carnivore con, Carnicon. Um, and I cannot remember his name right now. I want to say Feldman, maybe. And he tracks all sorts of stuff. I would for like numbers and tracking that kind of thing. If that's something you're into and you want to graph and track and all of that. Um, I'll show you my, my truffles that we're working on. I would go find him and I will try to send a link out in the, um, in the notes or like an email after this. And you can see kind of what he says about that because I'm just, I'm not a tracker. I'm a tracker for like symptoms and that's what I've always gone by. Um, but I'm not a tracker for like blood ketones or anything. How does one in increase their metabolism? Um, I think balancing hormones. If you're having like, a, you feel like your metabolism is super slow. I would say that if you eat a biologically appropriate diet and you can balance your hormones and just like definitely limit those carbs um, then that's a good way to boost your metabolism. There's really no reason if you're on carnivore to want to have a super high metabolism. It's just like more expense. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the benefit of that would be other than you have to sit there and eat a ton of meat. Um, I'm pretty happy with having to eat less meat on the days I don't have to eat as much because I'm not as hungry. So. Um, a bunch of these messages are getting filtered, so I'm trying to go through and unfilter them. Dawn effect. Yes, that's why glucose is elevated in the morning. Um, would three to one be a good starting point? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's fine. I just like, I just cook meat and then add extra fat, like probably in the form of tallow or butter. And you don't even really need to track all that much. Like, just make sure you're not getting most of your calories from protein. Um, cause that gives you some, it's like some cat thing. I can't remember what it is. It's like cat starvation or something. How much meat do I eat in a day? Um, one to two pounds, You're like closer to two pounds most days, especially if I'm not eating like eggs and dairy also. Um, 
So let's ask about lower leg cramps. I would try Epsom salt baths. And I'm starting to think there's something else at play with the Epsom salt and the baths because the studies that I've shown or seen, it looks like magnesium is not being absorbed that well through the skin. But everyone that I know that has had cramps um, from keto and carnivore and they do the Epsom salt, even if it's just a foot bath, like I fill a tub now because we only have a shower for my daughter. And I, every couple of days I just fill a tub with warm water and I put the Epsom salts in and she soaks and um, she's able to sleep again. And so there's something there's something about that that's just usually alleviates cramps and helps with sleeping. Oh, and dehydration. Yeah, that is a good that's a good point. Thanks for bringing that. Let's see. Let me see. I'm gonna I'm just gonna scroll up and see what other steak tartare. Yeah, it's good. Like if you can get over the weirdness and the cultural thing of eating raw, it's it's really good. It's like really mild. It's like well, the first time you try sushi and you think it's gonna be really strong, fishy tasting, and it's like the opposite. Um raw is great. There's Lori. She says she's waiting to start today with her meat. See, if you guys start today, you're going to be just fine because we're only doing a 28 day challenge. <laughs> so you still have room in September to do all of this. Um, that's probably smart to wait to stock up on meat. Definitely makes sense. I do have a couple of email questions. Someone's asking if um, sugar free power rate is okay. That's fine. If you want to do that, I definitely don't recommend it. But if you want to do sugar-free Powerade and get all of your calories from meat, otherwise, and animal foods, then I would rather have you do that than not at all. But definitely, I don't recommend sugar-free Powerade. Just drink. Okay, so I do drink a little bit of apple cider vinegar, but just drink water. And um, I put apple cider vinegar in Frank says the apple cider vinegar is okay. And I'm like, well, if Frank says it's okay, then I'm going to go with that. Um, Tyler's talking about Redmond sea salt. I love Redmond sea salt. That's what I use too. And you can get it in the shakers and you can get it like in the little rocks that you grind. Or if you look in your bulk section of your health food store or even like your regular grocery store, see if they have it in there because it's like one tenth the price. So I can fill up my whole huge shaker for like, I don't know, two bucks. Where to buy that is like six or seven. Hillary asks, if I eat mostly lamb and pork, but not much beef, is that okay? If we're not a beef, yeah, that's totally fine. My mother-in-law just got a pig that she won at an FFA fair. So we're eating a lot more beef or pork than I normally would. Um, sticking with like lamb or beef or like other ruminants is generally advised, but if you need to switch it up and you feel fine, like it's definitely better to eat a ton of chicken and fish than to not do, um, carnivore challenge. Jana asks if apple cider vinegar is difficult to drink. It's definitely acquired taste, but like, so is beer and people have no problem acquiring a taste for beer. I do it for PMS and it just, it works. Like I found nothing else that works as well. If I drink a little bit of apple cider vinegar every day, I don't get PMS and I really appreciate that. Joe says that he took apple cider vinegar and baking soda to clear up kidney stones a few years and it totally worked. That's really interesting. I've never heard of that. I've never had kidney stone issues either. Melvin eats a lot of goat and bison. Yeah, bison's great. Goat, I would imagine is too. Apple cider vinegar tastes sweet to me as well. Um, it does not taste sweet to the rest of my family. My kids actually as toddlers have all liked apple cider vinegar. They've all stolen it from me. And let's see. <laughs> Tyler's gonna share that, yeah. It's, it's an acquired taste. I've got a few more minutes for Q and A, but you guys are, you guys have quite a few. So I'm going to try and get to as many as I can. Keep doing my waffles. Artificial sweetener spikes insulin like sugar. 
Um, I Yeah, I've heard that too. I don't know that that happens for everyone, but I think the artificial sweetener definitely is something to try to avoid. If you have to have some kind of flavored something, which I'm totally, like I drink the bubbly waters, like the LaCroix. Um, I drink those and that's, I think that's totally fine. But if you need to have something that's sweetened, I would use monk fruit or stevia instead of like erythritol or aspartame for sure. Oh, that's interesting. Artificial sweeteners give you heartburn. That's um, that's definitely something a lot of people struggle with. Look, I do have another email question. Oh yeah, someone's asking about substitutions on the meal plan. Um, yeah, if you need to substitute, like the best way to cut costs because you can't afford what I have in there because it's not on sale, is just to, like shop the sale. Like every time I go in the grocery store, I always cruise by the meat department to see what's been marked down. And see. how to get into ketosis quickly. Someone asked me that last time. Sorry, I didn't get to that. Um, yeah, so if you do a 24 hour fast, you'll be in ketosis. Like 99% of people will be in ketosis after a 24 hour fast. Greener Pastures says artificial sweeteners increase your appetite. I, I can see that, definitely. Like they're just not good. Like if you need to use them as a crutch, and a transition food, then that's fine, but don't like plan on being on them long term. Have I cheated during carnivore? Oh, all the time. Oh, and just why I think I'm more qualified than most people to teach the general population. So yeah, I will cheat and I will feel awful. And um, I did I wasn't even on carnivore all summer because we were moving and life was crazy. Um I definitely feel a lot better. I need less sleep. I have more energy. I feel stronger. Like my joints don't ache and I'm 36. I feel like my joints should not ache. <laughs> so I definitely feel a lot better on carnivore. Um, but I definitely cheat often enough to remind myself that I don't like it. So I, I guess I see it more instead of being something super strict, which I'll do it super strict for like weeks at a time. But then it's not like a I don't know. It's not like being a vegan where I feel bad. I don't feel bad. I like, I physically feel bad, but I don't, I don't feel guilty if I go eat birthday cake at my kid's birthday party. I just feel physically gross and usually do a 24 hour fast after that to kind of clean my system up. Is it better to sleep on an empty stomach or full? I, I don't know. I can eat when I want to eat. I don't really follow anything in particular. People say that it's better to not sleep on a full stomach, but if I'm really hungry at eight o'clock at night, I'll go cook a steak and sleep on a full stomach. Yeah. Jeff says he can't cheat. Like, yeah, it kind of depends on what you're doing it for. And so if it ends, if, if it keeps you in bed for like four or five days or like run into the bathroom, then of course you don't want to. It's um, definitely just going to depend on how you do things. I do feel like just overall better and stronger after I've done carnivore. Like I feel like it kind of boosted my nutrition up. And so it's not like I went back to baseline as soon as I went off of it. So it looks like we are wrapping up. We will do this again next Sunday. We just did this. I'm going to show you my truffles again. Um, look at that big stack that I've done with you guys here. The shirt's on Amazon. Um, it runs small too. So if you're going to buy it off of Amazon, just search for like meat heels or carnivore shirt. It's there. I don't sell it. Um, I just like it, but so yeah, just, I would order a size up. Roxy says that cheating derails her and it's tough to get back. Yeah, that totally. I think that's, um, that's where it's easier to just be strict. It's like, it's easier for me to get up at six in the morning, every single morning, instead of like sleep until 10 on the weekends and then get back up. The, the waffles, you missed them. We made them in the beginning. It's just cheese and egg. So it's half a cup of cheese to one egg. And I did um, two cups of cheese and four eggs. Stress raises glucose. Yes, it does. And like stress, stress is just bad for us. So if we can avoid stress, um, that's totally a good thing to do for our bodies. 
But yeah, so we will be back next Sunday. If you guys have more questions, if you can email me, um, I'm going to update this as soon as it posts with the link to the challenge. If you're not in the email challenge and you're not getting my emails, um, go ahead and sign up. And I'd love to have you in that as well. And you can reply to those emails and I'll try to answer these in the live streams with you. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you, especially the ones that I'm seeing on all of my live streams. Can fermented yogurt cause erosion of teeth? I doubt it. Probably. Um, what's the usual time for the live feed is 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. Yeah, I, this hopefully, if I did it right, if not, I'll just re-record it tomorrow. But um, hopefully, hopefully this will post to YouTube in probably about an hour or two. So thank you guys. I will see you back soon.